So, folks, Jack Smith strikes again, and Donald Trump is terrified. Hit the like and subscribe button as we follow the terror-filled downfall of Donald Trump. And, you know, normally this guy is super paranoid. Donald Trump is paranoid 24-7, 365, so he often makes up scenarios in his brain. Although this is a rare instance where Donald Trump is 100% right. He is 100% right to be terror-filled right now to, as one of his former staffers said uh, like a week ago, scared S-wordless because Jack just did three things tonight. Jack directly, but also how he's filtering things through the media. And he makes clear that one, all the precedent in the world not only proves Donald Trump guilty, but proves that when he's convicted, he deserves to spend a long ass time in prison. Also, Jack is saying, I've taken down big dogs before, including other heads of states in other countries who, like Donald Trump, did crimes against humanity and were traitors to their own country. And three, just when you thought he found all the evidence, just when you thought that Jack was done collecting evidence, he just found more evidence of a shocking nature in a shocking place. Listen to all of this because you will not believe it. And we're going to be back to, back after together to break it all down. Wait for it. If special counsel Jack Smith's case against Donald Trump falters, mistrial, for example, or some other dismissal, then we know what happens. Trump gets off. But if Donald Trump is guilty in this case, will he go to prison? In our explainer right now, we have the answer. It depends. And there's actually some strong clues in recent history. Trump allies have minimized these as minor charges about storage or paperwork. And combining that argument with cooperation has spared some guilty officials from prison in the past. This is really at its core a storage argument that they're making, right? They're arguing there are documents there. They don't deny that he should have access to those documents. What they deny is that they were not properly stored. I don't think a fight over storage of documents is worthy of what they've done. That is the no biggie defense. Call it a misunderstanding like a parking ticket. And if you then do that and are cooperative with DOJ, like you would in traffic court, you can get to a compromise. You can get to conviction no prison. Other officials have done that. Pled guilty, avoided prison. Take former general and CIA chief David Petraeus, touted as a national security kind of gold standard before his own classified document scandal. One of the finest military officers of our time, General David Petraeus. General Petraeus's briefing was comprehensive. General David Petraeus was asked to do a very difficult job and he did it with distinction. Doing his job with distinction until he didn't. The FBI caught Petraeus sharing classified material with an author that he had a relationship with and also misleading the FBI. He turned a corner and pled guilty, avoiding prison and paying a fine. Same for President Clinton's national security advisor who lifted classified documents from the archives, cutting them up with scissors, but then cooperated to avoid prison and pay a fine. So history shows you can be guilty, those were actual guilty pleas, and still avoid prison entirely. And yet, many other people serve hard time for these same type of crimes, especially when they are busted and then insist on fighting to the end rather than turning that corner I mentioned. Now, people may be following this DOJ case because of Donald Trump, but these kind of sentences, they come down all the time. In the news right now, there's this case of an FBI veteran hit with a four-year sentence for taking classified documents, a situation that echoes the bathroom cameo from Mar-a-Lago because what you're looking at there is how Trump treated these documents. The judge in this other case rebuked this convict for jeopardizing our nation by leaving documents in your bathtub. And the prosecutor who originally led that case is actually now working with Jack Smith to prosecute Trump. So real people go to real prisons for these kind of convictions all the time. It's made headlines over the years. 
Bircham was sentenced June 1st to three years in prison. Mia Hoang Fo admitting to removing and retaining highly classified documents. Hal Martin was sentenced to nine years in prison. More than 11 years in federal prison. The sentence, 19 years in prison. As one of Jack Smith's predecessors explained, the task at hand was like prosecuting Kosovo's equivalent of Benjamin Franklin and Alexander Hamilton. Quote, if you indict these people, you're saying the founding fathers of Kosovo have committed atrocities, and I'm ready to prove it in an independent court with independent judges and rules that apply to everyone. Another former head of the Specialist Prosecutor's Office, Clint Williamson, explained that Smith focused on getting witnesses that had contributed to the process earlier to come on board again. And then Smith and his office focused on the chain of command. William says, quote, this is not unlike organized crime prosecutions. A mafia boss very rarely pulls the trigger himself. You have to develop the linkages between the trigger puller and the big boss who's giving the orders. Well, the work paid off. In June of 2020, in the midst of a global pandemic, when Smith's office announced that it was seeking an indictment against the then sitting president of the new nation, Kosovo, Hashim Thaci, and included 10 counts on various war crime charges, including nearly 100 murders and the torture of hundreds of victims. In fact, the announcement came while Thaci himself was in midair flying to the United States for a meeting with none other than... Yes, then President Donald Trump. The two men had met before in New York and in Paris, but these were to be formal talks at the White House meant to boost Trump's diplomatic bona fides. Now, a source told the Daily Beast, it now appears that prosecutors, with their announcement, were trying to stop Thatchy from using that meeting with Trump to pressure the United States to drop the case against him. After learning of the indictment, Thatchy did cancel the visit and return home to Kosovo. A little over four months later, after a judge confirmed the charges against him, Thatchy resigned from the presidency. He flew to The Hague, where he was taken into custody. The man who had been the sitting president of this new nation, a hero, a founding father. And Jack Smith continued methodically plugging away at his work, trying several of Thatchy's former allies in the KLA. Your honors, this is a case about the conditions required for the fair administration of justice and attempts by the accused to block the path of justice for so many. This is a case about what is required to make rule of law a reality. Think of that line. Think of that line. This is a case about what is required to make the rule of law a reality. Now, even without Jack Smith, who of course has got a new job, Hashim Thachi's trial continues in The Hague. It's ongoing. He remains in detention. Of course, just like Donald Trump, the former president of Kosovo remains innocent until proven guilty. He is due process. We do not know the outcome of his trial or what it will be. Although the Kosovo Specialist Prosecutor's Office has since convicted three other people. And with Jack Smith back here in the U.S., it appears that Donald Trump is hoping that he can run out the clock, that he can delay long enough to successfully restore himself to the White House so that he can get rid of this whole thing, so that he can declare himself above the law. But given his very recent history, it seems pretty clear Jack Smith is committed to not letting that happen. Ellie, how valuable could these recordings be to the special counsel's team? Well, Jake, tapes are gold to prosecutors. They're the best possible evidence you have because you get to play for the jury the defendant's own words and the defendant's own voice. And if we look at a crucial conversation like the one at Bedminster, where Donald Trump is acknowledging that he knows he has these documents, that he knows they were never declassified, and he's apparently referencing the contents of them. This is the document, the recording that Paula reported on, which appeared in the indictment. It's the single most important piece of evidence that I've seen in the indictment. If you didn't have a tape, you'd have to call an eyewitness. And eyewitnesses can be cross-examined. You don't remember exactly what words were used. You may have some bias or incentive to lie one way or other. But if you have a tape, you just play the tape and that's the best evidence you can have as a prosecutor. Paula, you're also reporting uh, that sources are saying that during the summer of 2021, when the Bedminster thing happened, multiple people were making recordings of Trump, which it's not surprising, I suppose, in some ways. But what do, you, what do you know about that? Well, the most surprising thing is that the former president knew he was being recorded when he made these comments about classified documents and for these other interviews. Now, during this time, the former president was in the habit of having his aides record any conversations with people working on books, 
journalists, even if they were friendly. But that has created a potential archive of evidence for prosecutors. And it's our understanding that most of these recordings were uploaded to the iCloud, and it's unclear though if prosecutors were able to access that. But in trying to, you know, protect himself against any incorrect reporting, he has provided a potential trove of evidence for prosecutors. Sometimes that happens. I mean, listen to that. All of that is phenomenal. Like, Jack is making it clear and all the experts are making it clear. It's not simply that Donald Trump did illegalities. It's what those illegalities will lead to. Let's just compare it to the, the hush money payment case because there there's a real debate. Well, Donald Trump did a crime. I think there's no debate about that. But is it like, is it a felony or a misdemeanor? There's a legal debate. And if Donald Trump gets convicted there, does he go to prison? Well, possibly, technically, by the rules of the book, he could, but it's not a super serious crime. And because he's gotten away with it for so long, technically, Trump has no criminal record. So you could see a scenario where Trump gets convicted in New York and, and is not sentenced to prison time. And that might actually be a fair sentence, or at least a reasonable one. Here, there is no doubt. If he's convicted of these crimes, he will spend serious time behind bars. There's no way around it. The nature of the crimes... The number of them, the number of counts, some of them carrying mandatory minimums in some cases, meaning that even if the judge wanted to, they would sort of have no choice. Like he's screwed in some ways, right? But then it gets to the fact that Jack's no rookie. The reason he was picked, no, it was not simply because he's a man of integrity, but because he's taken on big dogs in the United States and beyond it. And let's also be clear, and we've said this before, Jack hasn't won all of those cases. That's not a bad thing, though. You want a prosecutor that, yes, wins most of their cases because you don't want them bringing frivolous cases because you, you, you want to respect people's rights. But the fact that Jack was willing to take losses against millionaires and multimillionaires and presidents and senators and congresspeople and all of that shows that he's willing to take a shot at the biggest dogs in the land, the people that are the hardest to convict because they often have the lawyers and the money and the systems to protect them. Shows that he's a, he's a real dog. But what that also demonstrates, guys, there is that they got new evidence. New evidence was surrendered late tonight. Evidence that was strewn about Trump's basements and Vegas and everywhere. Jack Smith either jimmying open the cabinets themselves or just frankly going to Trump's team being like, I know you got the dirt, give it to me or you're getting your asses raided again. And I just won't raid Trump's properties. I'm going to raid your houses, your lawyer's offices. I'll do whatever it takes to get it. So surrender. And because Jack has been so strong, they didn't call his bluff. Jack won again tonight and Trump is crapping himself.